lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Understanding the teaching on two of our recorded teachings as you put the question to me. I'm not saying it could not be understood outside of Morial. It can. But within the context of our teaching, I would suggest that you listen, first of all, to one Messiah, two comings. Messiah, son of Joseph, Messiah, son of David, Hamashiach ben Yosef, and Hamashiach ben David. In his first coming, he is Ben Ephraim in Judaism. He's the suffering servant of Isaiah 53 in his function. Um, <clears throat> in his second coming, he's the son of David, who's going to set up the millennial, that is the Davidic kingdom. The other teaching to which I think you refer is, is Palm Sunday. For anyone interested in your question, they would need to watch or listen to this Palm Sunday teaching to grasp the background. Let's take the second half of your question first. The stones will cry out. Jesus here was speaking metaphorically. We are told in 1 Peter 2, 5, we are the stones of the temple. We are the stones of the temple. Christians, believers. What Jesus was saying in Jewish metaphor to the religious establishment who were raising their objections was the following. If the Jews do not proclaim me as Messiah, the Christians will. If the Jews don't proclaim me, the Christians will. Remember John the Baptist, when the Pharisees came to hear John the Baptist speak in the wilderness. He rebuked them saying, you're self-righteous and so forth. He was dealing with their self-righteousness. So we see the exact same typology from the Old Testament into the New in the ministry of Yohanan Amatbio, John the Baptist from Abraham. And then it is commented upon and elaborated and explained by Peter, first, first Peter, the stones. He was not talking about the stones of the temple literally beginning to cry out any more than it the trees of the field will clap their hands, meaning the trees are going to grow hands and begin clapping and having arms in place of branches. It is a metaphor. It is a Hebrew poetic alliteration of a sort where you are ascribing symbolic language to explain something of a spiritual nature. In other words, we shall be trees of righteousness. When Jesus opened the eyes of the blind man, he saw men walking as trees. A good tree will bear good fruit. Hence, the trees of the field, the mission field, the trees of the field will clap their hands. That's what it means. It doesn't mean trees are literally going to grow hands. Uh, again, be careful of the use of the term uh, miraculous. In the physical sense of the word of Jesus doing something physically miraculous. He, he can and does do those things, and he did those things, but that's not what it's talking about in the context of the Palm Sunday triumphal entry narrative. Now understand the following. The primary problem about what the people were doing was not what they were singing. They were singing the Hallel Rabbah from the Machzor, from the Hebrew festal liturgy of Passover. It's the way they were doing it. They were waving lulavim, palm branches, as if it were the Feast of Tabernacles. They began celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles instead of Passover because the Machzor, the Halal Rabbah, Psalm 113 to 118, is sung twice a year. Now we have to again understand the background that's on the recording on Palm Sunday, the festal typology. Palm Sunday, Passover, has to do with his first coming as a suffering servant. The Feast of Tabernacles, we are told, in Zechariah 14, etc., has to do with his second coming as the son of David, the millennial kingdom. But he was no less son of David and son of Joseph in substance and, 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 and essence of his being. When Jesus hung on the cross, Pilate put up the sign, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. He was still the king. He was just not occupying the position at the time, but that was still his identity. 
He was the king. Matthew's gospel is focused on the kingship of Jesus. Now, he did not ascend the throne in the earthly sense in his first coming. He will do that in his second coming when he reigns from Jerusalem during the millennium. But he was no less the king. Only the Messiah could be both high priest and king. A king had to be a descendant of David from the tribe of Judah, a priest a descendant of Aaron from the tribe of Levi. Only the Messiah could be both. Now, I only mention this in passing. That is why you see Levitical relatives, why, why Jesus' cousin John the Baptist was obviously from the tribe of Levi, and Jesus was a mixture of the tribes of Levi and Judah in his ancestry for legal purposes. Nonetheless, let's understand this further. The fact that he was our high priest making atonement for our sin on the altar when he hung on the cross does not make him any less king. Pilate put the sign, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. He was not functioning as king at that point. He was functioning as high priest, but he was no less our king. He's fully human and fully divine. When he walked the earth in Galilee and the apostles saw him and knew him, they knew him as a man. However, at the Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John saw the divine nature of Jesus in the Transfiguration. Likewise, John the Apostle, who knew Jesus as a man, sees him in his divinity, in his eternal glory in Revelation chapter 1, and it knocks him for six, proverbially speaking. He's beyond flabbergasted. He was no less God when he was here, even though he appeared as a human. He was no less king when he was here, even though he did not appear as a Davidic king reigning from the throne of David. That's who he was. The example I often give is Mark Twain's book, The Prince and the Pauper, made into a movie by Walt Disney. Based, uh, It's a docufiction based on King Edward VI. He exchanges places with the pauper, and he goes out and he lives with the paupers for a while. But he's actually the king. The fact that he appeared to be a pauper and lived with the paupers in London did not make him any less the king whose real home was in Hampton Court Palace. Well, a time came when Edward VI went to Camp Hampton Court Palace, when Henry VIII died and so forth. He goes there and he becomes the king. That is true. But when he was in the slums with the paupers, he was still the king. Jesus was still king in terms of his identity, in terms of his nature. He was still, as son of David, the king of the Jews. However, and king of kings, however, he was not functionally king at that time. It was not wrong of them to say, Hosanna to the son of David, except that they failed to say, Hosanna to the son of Joseph. It would not have been a problem with what they were saying. What they were saying was true. But they only wanted to know him as king, as somebody who was going to get rid of the Romans, the way the Maccabees got rid of the Greeks. They didn't want to know him as sin bearer, as suffering servant, as Ben Ephraim, as the rejected one. That was the problem. I again would point you to the teaching, One Messiah, Two Comings. We explore and develop and explain this at length. One Messiah, Two Comings. He was no less the king in his first coming in terms of his identity. And in eternity, we see he's the lamb who was slain. He's no less the sin bearer once he's glorified. We see that he retains the marks on his hands to remind us that he was crucified in our place. A uh, beautiful song by the country gospel singer Julian Welsh, by the marks where the nails have been, by the sign on his precious skin, I'll know my redeemer when I come to him, by the marks where the nails have been. Beautiful song by Julian Welsh. Absolutely tremendous. Um, well, he will still have those marks. We will still know who he is. And he will know who we are because he took our sin. Even after he's glorified, he will still be the same one who took our sin. But when he was taking our sin, he was still the same one who was going to be king. The two are not mutually exclusive. 
The problem is the lulavim, the palm branches, and that they were saying Hosanna to the son of David without saying it to the son of Joseph. They did the right thing in the wrong way. They said the right thing in part. That was the issue. He was both sin bearer and is both sin bearer and king in his first coming and in his second. I trust this explains matters. Thank you. My name is James Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you so much. Mm -hmm.